Recently, the church in the 21st century at Boston College has issued a, an attractive pamphlet entitled The Catholic Intellectual Tradition, A Conversation. Now, it's a conversation that's been going on for almost 2,000 years, and clearly one that continues today. Well, let me, as an approach, uh, suggest that we think about a famous painting here at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston uh, by Paul Gauguin. Gauguin, towards the end of his life, uh, when he was living in Tahiti, painted a huge canvas, uh, almost a triptych, uh, depicting three scenes from Tahitian life. On the right, a young mother with her perhaps newborn child. In the center, young people uh, with one prominent figure reaching for a fruit. And on the left, an old woman who clearly was preparing for death. Rather than give one title to the painting, uh, Gauguin gave uh, three questions which he inscribed in French on the top left hand of the canvas. And the three questions are, where do we come from? Who or what are we? And where are we going? Now, perhaps one could sum up the three questions by this question. Does human life, does human existence have an ultimate meaning and purpose? I think the Catholic intellectual tradition is an attempt to respond to that question. Well, sometimes if we think of the Catholic intellectual tradition and that adjective intellectual can perhaps throw us a bit, we think of some work of philosophy or theology, uh, St. Augustine's City of God, St. Thomas Aquinas' Summa. But I think there are many other forms that this tradition can take. It can take the form of poetry. Perhaps the greatest Catholic poem is Dante's Divine Comedy. Closer to our own day, T.S. Eliot, his four quartets. But it can also take more embodied form. It can take the form of architecture. I think of the great cathedrals of Europe with their towers stretching to the heavens. Or think of Bernini's colonnade in St. Peter's Square with the arms outstretched to embrace the people. It can take the form of art. Michelangelo's depiction of God's creation of Adam in the Sistine Chapel. It can take the form of music, uh, the masses uh, of Mozart, uh, Palestrina, Gregorian chant. All of these are attempts to express this vision. One might ask, now is there a golden thread that unites all of these forms? Is there a hinge upon which all of the responses to those questions revolve. And I would say with Cardinal Newman that that hinge is the incarnation, that God's eternal word became human, one of us, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, and his son, Jesus, so loved us that he gives himself for our salvation. And so if one wanted to try to present a summary answer to Gauguin's questions on the basis of the Catholic tradition, I think one would say, we come forth from love and we journey towards love. That love is the hope that sustains this conversation. The love which, as Dante says at the end of his great poem, moves the sun and the other stars. It strikes me that there is no more challenging or compelling topic for conversation, for reflection, or for living.